there was a time when our political leaders would have been as happy to be seen in the House of God as here in the Houses of Parliament. Nowadays, it's very different. God has become something of a political taboo for the people in power. So why do our political leaders keep their faith so firmly behind closed doors? Well, there's one person who's probably better placed than most to answer that question. He held the highest political office in the land for a decade. His name is Tony Blair. As the Labour Party's longest serving Prime Minister, Tony Blair was the only leader to have taken the party to three consecutive general election victories. After he first came to power in 1997, one of the first things Tony Blair did was to take his family to church. But despite his strong faith, he rarely spoke about his beliefs during his years in office. But now, in an exclusive interview for this programme, he speaks more openly than ever about his faith and the role of religion in public life. Well, thank you, first of all, very much for giving up some time to, to talk to us about this issue. Um, Alistair Campbell once interrupted an interview which was being done by a journalist <laughs> uh, when that journalist brought up the issue of religion, faith and God and, and famously came up with a phrase with, we don't do God. You evidently do do God. Yeah. Did you feel under pressure not to talk about religion and God while you were in office? Um. It's not that I felt under pressure, it's that every time I tried to do it, it was usually unfortunate. You know, it just, it's too difficult whilst you're actually in office to talk about these things in a way that doesn't get misinterpreted or people end up thinking, you know, you, when it comes to critical decisions that you're taking, somehow you've got a hotline to God and rather than looking at things in a sort of practical, temporal way. Why does that matter? Well, it shouldn't, and it doesn't in that sense. I mean, I think, you know, I never hid the fact that I was a practicing Christian. Did used to go to church every week, so people feel it's a... But this is a personal thing. You know, we didn't elect you to preach at us, get on with the job of being prime minister. I, I don't know, but I think I think it's... It is... It's sad in a way people feel... You can't talk about something that is obviously important to who you are. But... And maybe I became too sensitive to that or too cautious about it, but I just came to the conclusion that if I started talking about religion, it was going to be difficult. That statement, we don't do God, do you think that kind of epitomises um, the UK's attitude about the sort of relationship between politics and religion? Yes, I think it probably does, actually. But, but I always used to feel that people, um, in one sense, uh, are... are a little comforted if they think the person leading them has some sense of spiritual values. I mean, maybe I'm wrong in that, but I used to to think that. Um, it's not the reason why I have the faith I do, but I, so I think it's, I think, in fact, amongst the public, as opposed to amongst the way that things sometimes conducted in the media, I think they're, they're somewhat more nuanced than this. And although I don't think they'd ever support the animal system, they probably, we could have been a little more adventurous on this without bringing the house down. You touched on the fact there that it's very different in the States, the attitude towards religion and, and politics. Why do you think that is? Well, first of all, I think in America, people are, are actually just more open about their religious faith. Religion's very much um, avowed in America. You know, the president will end a speech God bless America, and people think, no, that's right, and that's, that's correct. Um, so Barack Obama in the election would talk about his faith and talk about his, his Christian belief, and people would think that's right and proper. And so, you know, it's different cultures of different ways of doing it. Thank you. God bless you. And may God bless the United States of America. So on the one hand, we live in an increasingly secular nation, but part of a global community where arguably religion has never been more important. The question for some is, should something which is so personal have an influence on politics? Would you like to see more integration between politics and religion generally? I think it all depends on what people mean by that. I mean, do I want sort of religious campaigns run in UK politics? No. <laughs> um, you know, do I think that uh, the policies of the government should be decided by religious clerics? No. Uh, do I think 
that some sense of spiritual values is an important part of public life, yes. Tony Blair has now taken his spiritual values onto the world stage. In March, he launched a lecture course on faith and globalisation at Yale University. And then he realised a long-held ambition and established the Tony Blair Faith Foundation. I have learned that there is not only life after politics, there is good life after politics. <laughs> if you find something that you really believe in, he's found something he really believes in. Thank you. Thank you. So this is something that's been a passion for me for years. I mean, long since, before, since I became Prime Minister or even leader of the Labour Party. The purpose of it is to bring the main religious face together in a better understanding of, of each other so that religion becomes that source of progress and not a destructive force that's pulling people apart at the same time as globalisation is pushing people together. Isn't the, the problem, the fly in the ointment of your foundation, the fact that each of the, let's say, Abrahamic faiths at least, are mutually exclusive in terms of you, you have to believe in one or not the other? Um, it's a very good question, but I think the answer to it is that in fact it helps for people to understand and explore the common roots. Although Christians remain Christians, Muslims, Muslims, Jews, Jews, nonetheless, by understanding the other's faith, then you do actually learn to respect, not merely tolerate, but to respect the other and understand the other. And my view is that where there's, there's, um, where there's ignorance, there's fear, and where there's fear, there's conflict. Uh, by contrast, where there's understanding, there's more likely to be harmony. Father, good to see you. Good to see you. You, in the worst way, had your own conflict, or certainly it seemed to us from the outside, with being an Anglican and wanting to join the Catholic Church. Why did you leave it until leaving office? I mean, again, it would have caused such a palaver if I'd done it whilst I was in office. But I mean, I, I said at the time, and I, I repeat, I mean, there was no disrespect for me for the Anglican Church. It's just that my family all go to Mass. My kids are brought up as Catholic, and I've been going to Mass for 25 years. So. To come into full communion seemed to be natural, seemed to be, you know, my, my natural home. But I, as I say, I, I always wanted to make that clear at the time. This was nothing, there's no great sort of doctrinal dispute I had with the Anglican Church or, you know, I didn't like the way it was heading or any of the rest of it. That's, 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 it wasn't about that at all, it was a very personal decision. And yet you could have joined before becoming Prime Minister. That would have not really hit the radar screen of anyone. Was there perhaps... I, don't know. I mean, I think... I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I guess... Um, maybe I was at a slightly different stage in my own development too. It wasn't a sort of, I'm an ambitious person and being a Roman Catholic well, I hope, and Prime Minister. I hope we're not in a situation in our country where you couldn't have a Roman Catholic as Prime Minister. I don't, to be honest, I don't think it would make any difference to people at all, politically. It's a bit of a big question. What does faith mean to you? It is the foundation of your life if you, if you are someone of faith. And what I think it gives you one and the same time is First of all, a sense that you are not the most important thing, that there is something higher and better than you, and, and, and incidentally, because that is reflected in the concept of love your neighbor, that that is also about other people too. So I think it gives you that, and I think it gives you at its best strength. It gives you the courage to, to do what you think is right. That's what spiritual faith is about to me. That's what it's... It's given me in my life, and I don't, like everyone else, I often don't live up to, to those high ideals, but it gives you that sense that that's where you should be, even if you're not. You're an extraordinarily busy man, um, hence the doing the interview on the train. Um, I'm assuming we're going to take some time off over Christmas. What do you do at Christmas? How does the day unravel for you and the, the family on Christmas Day? Obviously, a, We'll go to church, as we, as we always do. Um, and I think it's a time to reflect both on your, your family and your, your, your religious faith. For us, it's always a really, you know, it's an incredibly busy time. But I think, I think in a practical way, what Christmas always means to me is, is, is the family. That's, and especially when you're really busy and I don't sometimes see as much of the family as I would like to or should, then it gives you a chance to sort of anchor yourself back in that and do that within a... Um, a spiritual, and in my case, a Christian setting.